Good morning and welcome to Wild Wednesday here at the Kansas City Zoo. I'm your host, Allison, and I am here with Andrea. Hello. Welcome, welcome. We are here at a very, very cute exhibit. If you just look down towards your feet, <laughs> <laughs> who do we have down there? So these are our North American River otters. We okay. have two females. We okay. have Ariel who is this darker, kind of longer one right here. She's okay. about 10 years old. Okay. And then we have our youngster, Ursula, who is that one right there. She's a little bit lighter faced. Um, she's about a year, year and a half. Oh, wow. Um, both of these girls have an interesting story. They both were rescues out of the wild. What? Okay, so how does a rescue animal end up at a zoo? Yeah, so um, Ursula is our more recent one. Mm -hmm. So she was found abandoned. She was too young to be by herself without her mom. Oh, they couldn't okay. locate her mom, so they took her in, um, like a, a rescue place kind of yeah. took her in to take care of her. But unfortunately, when that happens, they start to mm. imprint on people. And mm -hmm. so you can't let them back out into the wild because then they would approach people and it would be unsafe for them. It would be unsafe for people. So yeah. typically those rescue places try to find a good place, like a forever home for yeah. them. And we were lucky enough to get Ursula. She's Aww. a fantastic otter. She also, she, she's been super fun since we've got her here at the zoo. And I love that her name is Ursula to yes. our Ariel. They are yes. a perfect pair. <laughs> they are. Now I know, how was that uh, that introduction process when they first got here? Because Ariel had been here, these were her digs. For so sure. how was it inviting a new friend into her home? Yeah, it was a slow process. <laughs> Ariel wasn't too sure of Ursula right off. Um, Ursula's very young, very rambunctious, wants mm. to play like all the time. So it was kind of hard for Ariel as an older otter to mm -hmm. adjust to that. So um, she was a little off put by yeah. Ursula initially, but you know, we did slow intros where they were together for a couple of hours each day, not like all or nothing. Yeah. Um, and she eventually kind of got used to her. And I think it's been really great for Ariel too, because Ariel is a much more playful, active otter now that Ursula is around too. And now they sleep together. They like to be together all the time. So it's definitely a great success story. That's really cool. And it's, yeah. it's kind of like when you uh, invited a puppy into your home and you already have an older dog. Correct. Watching that that uh, friendship take yes. place is a lot, a lot of times how it is at the zoo, which yes. is pretty cool. Now, um, you mentioned that these girls are rescue uh, otters yes. and that makes in their rescue from uh, North America, right? They're North American river yes. otters. Yes, so these guys are found in North America. They're all, there are several different kinds of otters yeah. found all over the world, but wow. these guys are North American river otters. They're found right in Missouri. Wow. Um, so one great thing about coming to the Kansas City Zoo is you can see them year round. They're used to all mm. of these temperatures that Missouri has, <laughs> hot, cold, you name it, they're used to it. So. Um, they are going to be out all year round for visitors to view. That's really cool. And, and they're so cute. You can see them right first thing, basically, when you come inside the zoo and people are like, otters. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love they're, them so they're much. They're a great first exhibit. Oh, right. Now, the thing that I noticed the most about their exhibit is all the things that are happening. Stuff, I mean, from right? the ground, <laughs> it is a jungle gym. So right. from the ground up there, there's so many things happening inside of here. And yeah. I know, I've noticed that it's probably because these animals are very playful and they seem relatively smart. There's they some, are. There's some yeah. wherewithal inside. Yeah. There. They're very smart animals. They're very playful and active. So they need things to do. Mm. So we give them lots of enrichment, which is basically like things to do. What can we do <laughs> to give them to keep their minds busy, their bodies busy? Um, these guys love all different kinds of enrichment. We do try to pull from different categories. So we have like food enrichment uh -huh. that we can feed them. We have manipulative, which is basically anything they can play with. They can roll around, they okay. can drag those types of things. We have sensory enrichment, which are more like things they could hear or smell, those mm. types of things. Um, we have environmental, which, you know, we count if it snows, that's environmental enrichment <laughs> for the otters that day because it's not something that occurs every day. Yeah. Um, and then we have social enrichment, which is where the keepers might train with them mm -hmm. um, and do kind of more like social interactions. Very with them. cool. Yeah. So what, what would you say, do they kind of each have a favorite type of enrichment they prefer? Or are they, they two peas in a pod? They like all the same kinds? Well, Ursula plays with everything. So <laughs> she's like the typical like one or two year old. Yeah. Right? She wants to touch and play with everything. Um, she's really cute because she'll get, we have big saucer sleds. She'll get under the saucer sled mm -hmm. and pull it around. So all you see is a big sled like going around. <laughs> um, and then um, Ariel also likes to play with the mani manipulative. Well, not quite as much as Ursula. Um, food enrichment's always a big hit. Yeah. Um, so any type of food that you throw in there, they're gonna like. So we have some ice treats we're gonna oh. toss to them. Hopefully I can get their attention. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. They're I on the move. I got their attention. They're on the move. <laughs> Perfect. So what exactly is in these ice treats? So this is just an ice treat with some food coloring and then there's like a little piece of fruit in there. Oh. Um, so we'll toss them in the water. If you want to okay. toss one in, you can sure, feel free to we'll toss one in too. Oh my goodness. And we'll just toss it up and over. Okay. Perfect. 
Now, what kind of fruit is it? What kind of fruits do they like the best? Um, they're proof for like apples, pears, kind of those types of things. Yeah. Um, they like carrots a lot, which isn't a fruit, but it's a vegetable. Yeah, it's still um, sweet though. Yeah, yeah, so they like carrots a lot. Um, but, you know, in the wild, yeah. they mostly eat meat. They yeah. don't eat a lot of stuff like yeah. that, but we do get a little bit, um, just again, for enrichment, they're proof for like dried fruit. So like oh. dried pineapple, dried apples, those types Ooh, of things. They so. like when the seasons mm. change and those warm fruits come <laughs> yeah. out. All right. Yeah. I like it. So <laughs> food, food is obviously a really good enrichment for animals, especially when it comes to like being rewarded for something. That's, yes. that's their, that's their thing. That's their jam, which I can appreciate. <laughs> but I also recognize that this exhibit from the ground up enrichment it starts with building an exhibit and yeah. we talked a lot about um, environmental enrichment too being a big deal and I just noticed there are so many things within this exhibit that probably also help physically stimulate them and yeah, show off those natural behaviors. A couple of points that maybe like you don't think of that's enrichment that are those beautiful waterfalls in the mm -hmm. back. Um, they love to play in those waterfalls. The running water is a great environmental mm. enrichment. The pool itself is an environmental mm. enrichment. North American river otters spend about 50% of time in the water and 50% of time on land. Yeah. So we tried to do a nice balance. On the, on the other side, which we call the dry side, there's pits. So we have a sand pit that they can play mm -hmm. in. We have a rock pit they can play in. And we have okay. a mulch pit that they can yeah. play in. So giving them lots of different substrates, things to kind of roll around in. Um, there's all the logs that they so they can get up and climb on different things. Um, so yes, the enrichment has definitely been designed also to kind of keep them active and busy. Yeah, and uh, while enrichment can be fun, we know sometimes enrichment sometimes spooks these guys. Yeah. So is there a particular piece of enrichment that they're like, we would prefer to never see that again? <laughs> yeah, you know, they're very curious. So sometimes they might be nervous of something at first, mm -hmm. um, but then we'll eventually come over we did have one otter that was terrified of a hammock that we had made. For, it was a fire hose hammock and we hung it up, not really thinking it would be a big deal and he would not cross past it. It was like really wow. scary for him. So we had to then slowly introduce it yeah. and, and then they became okay with it after yeah. a bit. But yeah, sometimes if it's something really big and new, um, it can be kind of intimidating. So yeah. you want to introduce it a little more slowly. Yeah, And people at home don't realize that something that's so simple as a hammock, or as it's a relaxation thing. It right. seems so simple <laughs> right. to animals. It's something big and scary. And yes. I don't know how to feel about it. Yes. And I think that's maybe happened a couple times with some bubble blowers here on grounds at the zoo. Some, some of the animals. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for being sure. Scared of things like yes. that. Well, this is super cool. And I know enrichment doesn't just have to stop here at the zoo. There are many ways you can do enrichment at home with your own pets um, or even with wildlife. Things like making birdhouses or bird feeders, yep, things bird like that. Yeah, bird feeders, yep. Yeah, those are all Bird great. baths. Those bird are baths, all great. that's yeah. right. <laughs> I know uh, you can create puzzle feeders out of like cardboard boxes and things like that. So those yes. are all really fun ways to use enrichment. It doesn't just have to stop here at the zoo. That's right. But I will say, when you are on zoo grounds, leave the enrichment to our keeper friends, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have a very rigorous process to figure out what's safe for the animals. Mm -hmm. um, we don't just throw anything in there. We definitely, it goes through a huge approval process. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that it's nothing they could get hurt on or get sick from. So. Right. And it stays on a schedule, right? You yes. have to have certain enrichment pieces yes. every certain days. That's really cool. Yeah. So the zoo is doing a big job in keeping the welfare nice and healthy for these animals here at the zoo. And Andrea is a part of a yes. team that does a really good job of it too. So thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Ursula thank and Ariel are so cute. Yes. And we're so lucky to have them here at the zoo. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week for another installment of Wild Wednesday. Until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.